Okay. Well, uh, this is, I can't believe it, but the 11th in the series of the Art of the Garnish cocktail party. So we've evolved from uh, the start 11 weeks ago where it was just, I called it the, like a COVID cocktail party and then it was the sit, like sheltering in place. So we're kind of moving from that, but then I just saw some disturbing uh, notation from my niece that Elizabeth is one in New Jersey is one of the towns that saw an increase again um, in coronavirus cases. So, um, you know, our prayers, obviously, uh, for everyone there, Brian, my Jenny's husband is a firefighter. So I always open by honoring the um, first responders, our police, our um, healthcare workers, firemen, uh, EMTs, and also those who are advocating for social justice. So um, I say cheers to them for that. And um, we only have a few left in the series now. So I was going to end it, you know, at the end of June. Um, you know, I just figured it was time for that. But, you know, I love doing it and I love sharing the things uh, from my garden and from my book. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Leanne and I'm the author of The Art of the Garnish. This is this book and previously The Hamptons and Long Island Homegrown Cookbook and um, working on two or three other books. So we keep our fingers crossed about that. Um, today is really hot and humid. It's a, like hot winds are blowing in, so it's scorcher. So you see I'm sort of dressed in a real summer style here. Um, so I don't know what kind of week you all had. I hope it was a good one and hopefully a healthier one uh, for me and my Duchess Designs team. Um, because I'm also a garden designer and a tablescape designer, horticulturist, uh, and a writer. So it all kind of ties in. So I hope you see that uh, plants are what is the link with all of this because um, there is no spirit that is not based on a plant, you know, all of your liquors, and of course the garden. Uh, so this week um, I'm really excited because the peony is my favorite flower. It is just so outrageously glamorous. It has that blousy kind of look in the garden, you know, sort of droops way on others. It has a fantastic fragrance. And uh, as you'll sh soon see, it's also a great, uh, you, can, you can eat it. You know, you can put it in your cocktails and garnishes here. You'll see I've been infusing some vodka with the peony petals, and that's gonna be a super, super drink for us just in a little bit so um so besides gardening this week me and my team the duchess team we uh, we went one of the one of my favorite garden clients she has a sunken garden and last year it was sort of like the secret garden we unearthed it it was just covered over you know a little by um loss let's just say loss of a loved one and then uh, couldn't get to it and so we opened it up and we went back this year and it's just absolutely beautiful and we also did a lot of mulching for clients um, so after this is over I got to go back to mulching for ourselves Bill's done a yeoman's job of that today he's just really fantastic um, and the other big thing was Bill's birthday so cheers again to Bill's birthday did you have a good one Bill yes <laughs> So we've been ordering some meat from D'Artagnan, the specialty meat uh, vendor. And uh, so we had some steaks, we had some good gin and tonics, and um, so it was good. I mean, I got home very late, but anyway, that's the way that went. Um, I also learned this week that Jordan Grace, she's, um, um, I think you've heard me in the past, some Art of the Garnish cocktail parties talk about her uh, making, they asked me to make a special signature cocktail for their wedding for Jordan and for her fiance Clint. But I just learned this week that she's also, um, she has a passion for writing and she has two books that she has on Amazon. So I love supporting people that have um, a good passion and uh, I mean, this is like so talented. So one is called Melancholy Me Z, the Anthology of Free Verse Poems. So Bill's going to zoom in, hopefully, on this book title. You can get it on Amazon. Yeah. 
And then here's another one. It's called Like Flowers Will Bloom Again, Anthology of Free Verse Poems. So here's one line she has on her Instagram account. You can follow that. If we could drink happiness, the liquid would quench our thirst like sweet nectar. So I thought that was perfectly appropriate. So cheers, Jordan. I'm going to get the books as I was um, Instagramming you. Is that I started to order them last night, and then I got uh, sort of taken away. And another great woman that um, I want to be able to help promote is Eva Louise Rich. And she sent me some um, botanical plant-based um, face, how do you say, cosmetics? I, I hesitate to call them that, but it's like nourishment for your face. And it's called Beauty Counter. So I'm, uh, she was kind enough to send them to me to test out. So we were going to do an Instagram live and she could explain about all of this, but we're gonna do it next week. So I'll let you know about that. But the world kind of you know, went on its axis this week yet again. There's always something, but oh, good grief. So anyway, in light of um, June is Rose Month, um, if, so I'm gonna make two cocktails. One is all about the roses, and I cut all these today. So the peonies from here, are the roses from our rose bushes. Bill loves the fragrance, right, Bill? Yeah. <laughs> so the the flowering rose is in the genus Rosa. It's in the family Rosacea, and the flower that bears its name and. There's over 300 species and tens of thousands of cultivars, and they form a group of plants that can be erect shrubs, they can be climbers, they can be trailing. A rose is, you know, it's our national flower of the United States, so it's very um, popular for many, many reasons. And I was very lucky to work in um, two great botanic gardens in New York, the New York Botanic Garden in the Bronx. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze, so don't laugh if I do that. <laughs> and Brooklyn Botanic Garden. and the, the rose gardens, the Peggy Rockefeller Rose Garden and the Rose Garden at Brooklyn Botanic Garden are the site of, usually in June, there's big galas that are there. And um, it's uh, obviously a fundraising, but it's also a terrific evening for people to socialize and walk around the garden. And for me, I was so um, crazy good. Bill will show you, it ran in the New York Times when Bill Cunningham was... <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me, see, I told you I was going to sneeze. I'm so sorry. Um, but the, can you get over there or no? All right, let me go over just to. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, so you can see when Bill Cunningham, and he was the, like on the style editor, he took pictures of, you know, people, street people in New York and all the gala events. So he, he never wanted people to know who he was, but of course he rode his bicycle to everything and everyone did know who he was. He had on like a little French painter's uh, jacket and a little bow tie often and he rode his bike everywhere even he would put the bike on the subway when he came to Brooklyn Botanic Garden but he came around the corner when I was in the Rose Garden that's what that picture is and I had had my martini and he said oh honey you look so beautiful and I had this beautiful dress I'd gotten at Bergdorf's for some occasion or someone's wedding but it had all it was like a sheath underneath and it had all flowers that went down the front so that was like oh my god and when it ran you know i just never forgot it so that's why you have to frame something like that and then this was um a year or two later so this was um i wanted to dress all in like rose type fashion so jordan will those because i had rose shoes that bill show you in a second when he comes over but this was in a local uh, paper and it said back to the gray skies and displacement from the rose garden the bbg's director of communications leanne lavin was a very beautiful living substitute for the roses from head to toe so i just printed this out tonight i had to find this but um i had rose shoes so that was inspired then i had the rose um wristlet and then it was so humid, you couldn't do anything with your hair, so you had to, look how short it was. <laughs> I put a rose in my hair. But, so today's the first day I really had to put it up here for the event. I was like, oh boy, I can't believe it's been like three months since a haircut, but you know, we're doing fine. Most days I'm just out gardening or writing, so it doesn't matter if I look like a little boy. <laughs> anyway, so, um, Going back to the rose and uh, wh why it's so important as a crop uh, uh, plant family. So 
the rose family encompasses fruits like apples and pears and quince, uh, almonds, peaches, apricots. So, you know, the rose family is, is huge. It also has strawberries, blackberries. So I have some of these as part of the uh, drink cocktail uh, garnishes and mix. And so just like a chef that'll say what grows together goes together. So the same thing for cocktails, like what has similar, you know, plant ingredients. And I had been told for the longest time that uh, cucumbers were in the rose family, and that's pretty much why Hendrix also had you know, like cucumber and rose in their gin. But I don't, I don't think that's true. I mean, the rose and the cucumber have five sepals as part of the plant, but you know, I'm not very sure of that. If anyone knows, you know, please tell me. But roses have a lot of medicinal properties, so a lot of people don't think you can eat them because or you know use them in cooking, but. Um, they're, they're very, very healthy for you. So you can use the petals and the fruit. A lot of people know about rose hips, so they take that. Rose petals are they're mildly sedative, they're antiseptic, they're anti-inflammatory, anti-parasitic, they're mild laxatives and a good support tonic for the heart. So maybe that's a little bit where the romantic part came in and they're great for lowering cholesterol so you can't beat the rose for that so the rose uh, petals and the leaves are edible and they prevent a number of diseases and uh, they're also used obviously as a, a fragrance um, you know so who doesn't love the smell of a beautiful rose and they're also used as a natural pesticide so you don't need chemicals and uh, the rose leaves are enriched with nutrients and lots of different vitamins. Um, everyone really associates roses with love, a uh, symbol of love. And I encourage you to look at all the different plants and see their symbols of peace, love. Um, there's a meaning for everything and there's a historical fact. I've shared with you some of them over the past, you know, 10 series that we've had. And we've been eating and using garnishes for the past 10 series. We had hostas, we had tulip uh, petals, we had uh, lilacs, and we made the simple syrup, you know, with that as well as using it as a live garnish, um, uh, carrots. So you can look to your ornamentals because in the old days, that's what people ate. They didn't become just for their sheer beauty. But um, red rose is a symbol of love. Yellow is supposed to be friendship. Orange is enthusiasm, I would say, you know, some people really just don't like orange, but um, I would say Frank Sinatra said that orange is the happiest color, and I like that. We have sort of a terracotta-ish, um, no, I wouldn't really say that. It's more, what, orangey, saffron. Who was the one that did the arches in, he just, that Cristo, more like a Cristo uh, orange color that's for our garden room. Uh, white rose is purity and pink is joy. and. Um, for some of you who follow me on Garden Glamour on my blog, you can look up some years ago, I did a story uh, based on the fact that when I went to work in Ecuador every year in the winter uh, doing garden design and um, menu development, they're right in the dairy, but more importantly here is the rose uh, section, the rose growing section. And so much of Ecuador's roses obviously come to the United States in time for Valentine's Day. And um, when they come into so-called customs here in the United States, the agents, they spank all the roses. They say they do every one, I don't know, but spank the roses in order to make sure there's no um, little critters coming along inside of it. So you can see that on Garden Glamour if you wanna go to that. So here, uh, now we're gonna start with the rose. Sorry, I have like this dress <laughs> and it has like a petticoat underneath it. So it's like very fluffy. Um, so we're going to mix up first this gin. Oh, I should show it to you because it's so pretty. So one of the uh, um, featured mixologists in the book is Valentina Carbone, and she's an Italian that lives in London, and she was at Nobu Berkeley Street. And uh, I'll show you the picture, and then I'll read the little head note here if you can see it. Oh, too close? <laughs> and the picture, when uh, Doug Young came and took the photographs here at our uh, country house, we just picked the roses from the same shrubs that I have here, and then we set up the photo composition. But uh, here's the head note. It says, 
While sipping tea with her family, Valentina got the urge to capture the serene beauty of an English rose garden on a summer's day. Dedicated to her beloved uncle and his breathtaking garden, the gin-based English rose proves that her aim is true. So that's what we're, I'm just going to make her very pretty, very pretty cocktail. Let me just make sure I don't knock this over. Okay, move the champagne glass, the monogrammed Rhiannon and Bill champagne glass. Okay, so it's appropriate that I use the London Bombay gin. We had gin and tonics on Bill's birthday, but it's a dry gin. And my aunt, some of my ancestors were British, so I love that. Again, the Brits always drank gin and tonic and especially when they were colonizing places that they would say that only mad dogs and Englishmen went out in the heat. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, my darling, how are you? I just read your post. I uh, hope you'll be safe, be safe. All right, so then we made the, I made a rose simple syrup earlier. So if you've been watching the past series, uh, a simple syrup is just half sugar, half water, and then whatever you're infusing it with. So some weeks I did the lilac, some I did um, ginger, and uh, this week we did the rose, okay? And then I'm gonna cut some lemon. So the recipe calls for the yuzo, which is a very big, wonderful, um, like Japanese lemon. But um, since we don't have that in the old days, just the lemon itself was very exotic, right? So, you, especially now when you can't get everything at the store. Okay, then the recipe calls for chartreuse, but I, don't, I didn't have chartreuse and I probably could have gotten it. I think it's very expensive, but I had this Strega, and if you can see, it's such a beautiful bottle. When we were doing the cocktail lessons with Joss, Sushin and I highly recommend that you all go to Ice and Alchemy and sign up for it. The only reason why we didn't do it this past week was because it was the same drink that we, two drinks that we did, the same class I should say, that we did the week before. But this is fantastic. Uh, it's also an Italian liqueur and it's very similar. So Josh was encouraging me not to open this. He said it's probably like a very expensive, um, like, celebration, you know, bottle of brewing, but you know, like a good bottle of wine or champagne, you can't go forever without doing it. So I wanted to um, read to you what it says on the back of Strega. I love this. So it says, in 1860, Giuseppe Alberti and his apothecary father revised an ancient recipe for an herbal liqueur that according to legend was brewed by witches in the area and used as a love potion. So I figured the love roses, the sign of love, roses. So this goes even better than I think the chartreuse. And this is how it got its name because in Italian, Strega is a witch. And we're all good witches, aren't we? Strega liqueur is distilled from a mixture of 70 different kinds of herbs and spices. The ingredients come from Europe, Central America, and from the Orient. Among the ingredients are cinnamon from Ceylon, juniper from the Italian region and mint that grows wild on the river banks around Benvenetto. Its characteristic golden color is given by a distilled saffron extract. Strega is matured in oak barrels and enhances the bouquet. Sounds like a love potion to me, like a mixture, but you can see that beautiful yellow color. Chartreuse obviously is a little bit more green than this, but um, I think if you've been watching, you remember that I was saying that in the, originally all liquors, spirits, even soda pop was all regional. Okay, she said put a strawberry, raspberry, and our blueberries aren't ready, so I had to, I have them, I put them in my smoothies. Okay. And uh, we'll put some, Caitlin's watching. Caitlin, darling, how are you? I'm going to make you a special drink. I love wine too, but I'm going to get you a very special cocktail. Maybe some, like a wine-based cocktail. You think you would like that? <laughs> we could put that in there. So we're just mixing up the first rose 
um, cocktail. Okay. And I'm going to put this in a coop. It's going to be so pretty. Let me just move something here. This is for the next drink. Oh, you are? Is Roberta with you? Yeah. Are you still Catskill quarantining? Holy smokes, that's so pretty. Hold it up. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do, and this is like a big no-no because it should be in the highball glass, but I just wanted you to see this beautiful... Bill, can you get a picture? So I have a rose ice mold and look how pretty it looks. So I also have these rose petals and I'll put a couple in there, but this is from Lior Sicaris. He's the spice whisperer. You put a couple of the rose petals like that. You can use as much as you want. We have a plethora of uh, a bounty of things that we can put in. I also made it, Bill helped me with Juliet, you know, on the, um, what's that thing called? Mandolin. On the mandolin. So we cut them and made the cucumber. You could use the cucumber because um, it goes with the drink, the cucumber um, garnish. I hope it's cooler in the Catskills than it is here. So. Come on, that is like so beautiful. I mean, wouldn't your sweetheart just love that? Here are my Art of the Garnish cocktail napkins. I think I told you when we were doing the event at Kosaka, New York, and we had to, I ordered them from a woman on Etsy and she was so great, but it was a real, another adventure in trauma. Here, cheers. Mm. Okay, how do I describe it? It's like a little spicy in a way. It's very s smooth, uh, refreshing, and certainly so romantic, so gorgeous. Jordan's watching. Hi, Jordan. You missed my earlier, if you just came on, I talked about your two books on Amazon. You can go back and look at it because it'll be a saved video, but you can see. What's your Instagram? Put it on and then Bill can say because I didn't remember what that was, but I showed folks your two books. Uh, I'll say this is one of the most delicious cocktails that I've made, right? I don't want to stop drinking it. I just love the, the ice mold that goes with it. You can I put in a little bit of natural uh, uh, cherry juice to make it that rose color. Do you love my little teeny tiny Ikebana? I think Kathleen that's... Kathleen Haggerty, Kelly's watching. Hi, Kathleen. I went to school with her. She's a doll or what? You missed my first part, but you can look at it later um, when you... Because uh, it'll be a saved video. So I was given like the background on the book and the roses. And these are all from our garden. And then we just made this fabulous rose cocktail from the book. So I guess in the spirit of time, because I got to get going here, but <laughs> um, the next one is a peony cocktail. So uh, as I said, the peony is just my most favorite flower and plant. It does everything. I mean, this goddess of the garden, she not only looks and smells wonderful, but you can use them in so many different ways. Uh, I mean, we really do revere it when my garden client friends, uh, Angie Lambert, she takes beautiful, beautiful photos of them almost every day from her garden. So you can look at that on Angie Lambert Photography. One of my style icons is Carolyn Rome, and she did a beautiful posting the other day with her peonies. And oh, I just got three Ito tree peonies. I cannot wait for them to bloom. I'll be sharing that with you on uh, Instagram. Oh, this cocktail is sublime, I have to say. So pretty. Um, and last year we visited, um, I got, we were on a garden tour and we went to this place in North Jersey called, you have to be careful how you say it, Peony's Envy. Peony's Envy. And um, 
they had fields and fields of peonies. But I have everything peony, even this like tray is all peony design. You can paint them. The fragrance coming, I put them in our bedroom, I put them in my spa bathroom. It's just, these are the herbaceous ones. The tree peony that I got is, is a little bit different too, but these petals um, have long been used in cooking and, um, and drinking. Same as like the rose, you know, rose water and, and so on, so you can use it the same way. So the, the, the peony petals can be used in salads, you can cook it for a little treat. Peony water was once a delicacy. Um, you can float the blooms in punches. Um, for many bridal showers or parties, people would ask me to make this special punch that I did. And in that I'd use a bunt pan and you put the distilled water in and then the rose blossoms in there. But I think the peony blossoms would be absolutely so romantic, so beautiful. So the distilled water is very clear. So then you put the petals in there and then put more water on top of it and refreeze it. And when you're ready to put it in the punch, just warm it up a little bit and then put it right in. We did it uh, for one of um, the book signing parties that Gina and Ted hosted for Art of the Garnish. It was so beautiful. So you can also uh, put it in like jellies. You can make ice cream out of it. So this plan is like unbelievable it does everything so you can make I saw one was a um, peony gimlet that you can make and you use it with the simple syrup either with tarragon or basil um, but I thought because she's so special I'm going to make a peony a royal peony peony royale so we're going to mix up if I can get it the ice. It's very simple to make. Hopefully at your own cocktail parties you think about things like the ambiance, the music. Here we've got some Cole Porter music playing. Okay, so here I've been infusing the vodka with the peony blossoms for a while, but it just looks so pretty and I keep it in the freezer. So it's been down here for like a little bit, but let's see. Good, good girl. You have to do that. Also, that's what Julia has to do for her yoga. She has to put that put that on there so that people can get ready access. Everyone's have to be very creative in this day and age about like how they're gonna continue their businesses or how they service their folks. I mean, for us, we're lucky for the garden design, the writing, nothing really changes. That's why I don't have a spare moment. Okay, and then Cointreau, so I use this instead I didn't have the Cointreau, but it's an orange base liqueur. Say, kiss by the sun. Okay, so this is a um, triple grand orange liqueur. Love that. Okay. Tell me what y'all are drinking. Well, and then some cherry juice. Now, I always tell people, especially in, in the book too, but do not get those maraschino cherries that you see at the bar, that bright red cherry. Don't do that. You have to have Luxardo. So I always have that, but I got this one this time. Show me the top. <laughs> it's a beautiful bottle besides. You know, Luxardo cherries only come from the Dalmatian coast. And I... If, People who know, they heard me tell this story before. All right, I'm just going to pour a little cherry juice in here. Um, but during Prohibition, they were forbidden to send it because the Italians took the cherries and they marinated it in liquor. And so you couldn't have that. So this crafty guy in Chicago said, I'll take care of that. So he said, I'll supply the maraschinos. But what he did, he didn't have, he just took cherries and then he bleached them. So that, and then they put the red dye number, whatever that was, that was on there. And uh, that's how it got back to red. So he like cleansed them with bleach, which sounds like pretty horrific. And uh, then that? put the red back in it. What's that? This is lime juice, fresh squeezed lime juice that you put in. Okay. And then 
you're gonna shake it up and what I have to get is a Nick and Nora glass I don't have one of those I'm gonna go to it's just cocktails and get one but in the meantime I'm gonna use another poop glass I know I will Bill just likes when I shake <laughs> You like to see the um, condensation on the side. Okay, let me move this over. And when you're ready, you can knock on the side on our beautiful bar that I designed to look like a bar, Hemingway's bar, kind of like that that I saw when I was in Havana. Oh, and I love the Hawthorne strainer. I always forget because it's like a magic Hoo -hoo, look at that color so beautiful and then the piece de resistance like any royale you're going to top it with a little bit of sparkling wine but it's technically champagne and i love this ravintos this is i was turned on it's a spanish uh champagne it's relatively inexpensive and Belinda Chang, who's like a master. Um, put this back in here. Sommelier bartender. So she turned me on to it once after an event over in Brooklyn. We went to her club back in Manhattan near where we both live. So I hate to move this, but I will. <laughs> Bill's having a heart attack because I'm spilling it on the bar. Look at that. It's fantastic, right? I got to take a picture. I forgot to take a picture of it for last time. Let me see. I hope you can see the beauty of this. It's just they're so gorgeous. Okay, my dears, if I couldn't love a pea anymore. Ah, it's so refreshing. It has like the, obviously the bubbles from the champagne, the lime juice makes it refreshing, and the vodka's got that so with the peonies and it's a little bit spicy, sweet, just like the fragrances of the peony itself. So I'm sorry <laughs> I'm taking so much time, but I just truly love, love, love these cocktails. And I think they're beautiful. I think they're delicious. I think they're fun to make. Um, I think they're impressive for you. So I know we're going to sign off shortly because I have to go back to mulching. And we have to um, go down and start Mother's Car, which hasn't been started in two months. Um, so Sunday will be our first day of going to Mass. They have it in the parking lot on a loudspeaker and supposedly they serve communion like that. I don't know how that's gonna work, but every day is like a new adventure. So I think I say so too much, but thank you all for watching. If anybody has any points or anything that they wanna share, just please tag on to it and again, I thank you for coming to the Art of the Garnish cocktail party. I'll post it on um, the uh, Garden Glamour page so folks that came in a little bit later will be able to see the full, uh, the full video. And um, then we go from there. Oh, yeah, and Melanie's going to come on. So she's got the Machu Pisco. So here's the two bottles. Uh, you know, I wrote to her just before and I apologize that I've just been so tied up with um, crazy, we call this the silly season in the garden world because the two seasons come together. As I wrote on Instagram, I really think it's funny that um, my garden guru friend, uh, Margaret wrote, she calls this the shaggy season because so many of the plants are just, you know, the tulips and the spring bulbs, they're gone down and all their yellow or brown leaves are there. And then the summer flowers are coming up, but you got to get rid of those. So that's the shaggy part. So you clean that up and then you get, you know, into the mulch thing. But 
So I, I beg forgiveness and I asked Melanie if we could talk on Monday or Tuesday and then we can set it up so that you all can hear her fabulous story of success and how she created this world-class Peace Go. And Josh Shushin, the um, mixologist from the book, he said Peace Go is bar none his fave, bar none, <laughs> that's pretty good. It's his favorite um, spirit. And I think a lot of Americans don't know it very well. So we're going to make a, a lot of Peace Go, we're going to create a lot of Peace Go drinks for you and give you some thoughts. But, but look at those bottles, they're so beautiful, especially the one that's dedicated to her abuela, to her grandmother. So I can't wait to do it. I'm very honored. They were just a tremendous asset, help, a lot of girlfriend love and power that went into helping me with the book. So. Cheers to Melanie, and we'll coordinate that. You guys are going to love talking to her, and you'll be inspired. Cheers, my loves. I guess it's time to go. I went over, right? Ah! Enjoy your hot weekend. Thank you.